We are going to refresh your memory on some exponent properties today. So if you have any value raised to the zero power, it's equal to one. So say you have 576 x to the third, that entire quantity raised to the zero power, guess what? It's just one. If you have two terms with the same base being multiplied, since your exponent tells you how many factors there are, you could just add those exponents together. If you have something being raised to a power raised to another power, well, you could write it out times itself that number of times, or you could go, oh, that's three groups of five squared, so three times two gives you five to the sixth. Kind of a shortcut. And if you have two terms with the same base being divided, think about, well, every term divided by itself gives you one, so every paired up group of factors divides out to one. You can subtract six minus four to get five squared and go, there were more fives on bottom, so the leftovers are on bottom. So that's a little recap of your exponent properties. Let's use them. So say you have x to the third times x to the ninth, you could write out three factors of x and the nine factors of x, count them up, put them all together, or you could just add your exponents and have x to the twelfth. Down here, remember that that z to the zero power is equal to one, it's equal to the number one, not z to the first. And then look for your like terms. And if you have x to the first times x to the third, that means there's four total factors of x. y to the fifth times y to the eighth means there are 13 factors of y. If you add them all up, times one is just x to the fourth, y to the 13th. Let's look at a another one. So there's several ways you could do most of these. I'm just gonna write this out times itself three times and show you it that way first. You can always do it that way if you prefer. So if I'm raising this to the third power, that means I'm taking it times itself three times. And then I could do my multiplication. Negative two times itself three times is negative eight. If I have x squared times itself three times, that gives you a total of six factors of x, two plus two plus two. y to the fourth times itself four times would give you a total of 12 factors of y. Or you could use your exponent property that says powers raised to a power. You can multiply those powers together. So you'd have to make sure to put the negative two in parentheses to include the negative. That's to the first power times three, and then x is squared times three, and then y is to the four times three power, and then you'd end up with the same result. This one you've got some fractions, so I'm gonna choose to multiply straight across first. So that would give me 20x to the third over five y to the fourth, and then really the only thing you can do is reduce 20 divided by 5 to just 4 over 1. And that is it. If you look at E, I'm going to choose to simplify inside my parentheses first. You could square the whole thing and then simplify, but I think it's easier to simplify inside first. So I could divide out one common factor of x and just have four factors of x left out in my denominator. And then 5 minus two would leave you with three factors of y. And you can always write them out and think about it. Well, if I divide out that one common factor of x, there are four left. And then that whole quantity is still squared. You could just write it out times itself, or you can use your property where you multiply your exponents, since it's just single terms inside, which will give you 9y to the 6th over x to the 8th and z to the 10th. A little bit of negative exponents. So remember, a negative exponent is essentially 1 over that. So if you have like a y to the negative 3rd, it's going to be 1 over y to the 3rd, which will like flip it to the bottom. And then if you have z to the negative fourth on top, again, that's going to flip that to the bottom. But the y to the negative fifth on bottom, since it's like 1 over 1 over, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal and it's going to flip it up top. So kind of they swap locations in the numerator and denominator. 
All right, now that I've rewritten it and all my exponents are positive, I'm going to multiply straight across. You could like cross reduce, so I'm just going to multiply straight across and reduce at the end. And then you have some common factors of y, so you can divide out three common factors of y, which leaves you just with two of them on top since five was larger than three. And that is what you get. A couple more. So I'm going to have my numerator and denominator both to the negative third here, since the whole fraction is to the negative third. And that means that essentially my 4 to the negative third is going to become 4 to the positive third on bottom and end the positive third on top. So they're kind of flipped. And 4 to the third is 64. You could instead think of it as like 4 over n to the negative first to the third power and like flip it and make it n over 4 and then raise it to the third. That would be okay too. One thing that is super important is to make sure you are careful with what the exponent is attached to. So like the first one here, that negative first is on that whole quantity. But on your second term, the only thing raised to the negative second power is b, not the 4a. So I'm going to go ahead and make it 1 over 6a to the third b to the fourth and move that b squared to the denominator. Then I'm going to multiply straight across, which add your exponents on b, you get b to the sixth. And you can reduce 4 over 6 to 2 over 3. And divide out one common factor of a leaves you with a squared on bottom.